Hi there, welcome to Nappy and Piss. In this video, I'm going to be featuring four companies that have been recently put onto my to buy watch list. There are many reasons why a company might be placed on this watch list. For instance, I might hear some positive chatter, particularly from an expert, and I just want to follow the company a little bit more closely than I would otherwise. Or the company may have released a positive financial report like a yearly or appendix 4C and the market has reacted to that report quite favorably, sometimes I'll refer to that as a breakout in the share price. Or sometimes you could just see a bit of a shift in the sentiment and momentum in the share price. Now, just because the companies are placed on this watch list doesn't necessarily mean I will take a position. That's why I've got the question mark there. All it means is I just pay a bit closer attention to the share price movement of these companies over the next few weeks. So the four companies I'll be looking at today's video are OFX Group, which used to be called OzForex, QBE, CSL, and Gentrack. For full disclosure purposes, I do own CSL and Gentrack in my buy and hold portfolio, and I still will potentially take a position in these companies in my other portfolio, which is my momentum and sentiment. And the one difference between those two portfolios is in my buy and hold portfolio, I try to hold those companies as long as possible. In the momentum and sentiment portfolio, it's all about owning as long as the share price is running up. So let's get to the first company, which is OFX Group. OFX Group listed in late 2013, and it hasn't been good news for shareholders, particularly buy and hold shareholders who thought they would hold this company for you know decades because the share price has gone down. In fact, the share price went to a high of $3.50 in late 2015 and has been dropping ever since then. It is currently around $1.38, has been as low as just on a dollar over the past year and three months or so. A well-defined downtrend that began in late 2015, right at the peak in the share price. Looks like it was a double top there. And we might have seen the first signs of a breakout of the share price in this downtrend since they released their financial report on May the 18th. So let's look at the shorter term chart, the six month daily chart, and we'll see the share price is looking like it's breaking out. OFX Group released their financial year 21 results on May the 18th, and the market loved it. Uh, share price went up 8% on pretty good volume as well. Now, I've maintained that long-term downtrend in this graph, and you can see actually the share price breaking out of that downtrend in the past week or so. Now, the previous chart was a weekly chart. This is a daily chart. So what we need to see in the next few weeks is the share price remaining above that downtrend. The other interesting thing here is we did have a resistance level at $1.35. So we've seen the share price hit $1.35 twice in the past year. So this is a six month chart. And every time, or both times it hit $1.35, we saw the share price rebound off it down to the downside. And we've seen the share price move through that resistance level as well after the release of the full year results. So this is a potential breakout in the share price. And that's why even though I'm not excited about this company, just because I'm not excited about the company doesn't mean the market can't be. So the market is seeing something here to get excited about. So I'm just reading what the market is telling me. And this is a breakout in the share price of OFX Group. And that's why I'm potentially going to take a position in this company. Next company on the list is CSL, and this is a company that has done wonderfully well for its shareholders since they IPO'd. In fact, if you bought a fair bit of shares at that time in CSL have held on, you probably could have retired by now quite wealthy. Market of $129 billion, revenue $13.8 billion, and operating cash flow $4.9 billion. Uh, I would not argue with anyone who'd said this is the best Australian company uh, that is in existence. Um, you could argue either way, I think. Anyway, uh, so this is a five-year weekly chart going back to 2016. We saw the share price increase from $100 to a high of just about $340 just before COVID-19. We have seen the share price under pressure since then, and both times it's fell to about $245. It's rebounded quite well off that. So it reached $245 in the COVID-19 financial panic. And then just recently, about a couple of months ago, it also went down to $245. And seems like that level 
is really good support because both times it's bounced off it quite well. And if you did take a position in CSL and if it fell below $245, that would be bearish and an automatic sell signal. So let's look at the uh, shorter term chart and we'll get a better indication on why I'm a little bit bullish about CSL. This is the six month daily chart and you can see the share price reached $245 in the start of March and has bounced off it there quite well. One of the things I do use to show a bit of a shift in the sentiment and momentum in the share price is just look at the moving averages. So I've got the 50, 20 and 10 day exponential moving averages here. And when they turn around or whenever you see the 50 day moving average, which is the gray line, and whenever that is on the top of the moving averages, that means the share price is in a downtrend. But when it shifts and it has shifted recently in CSL, you can see the gray line, gray line or the 50 day exponential moving average is on the bottom. That means the shift or there is or has been a shift in the sentiment. And we have seen the share price break above $280 in the last few trading days. And that is, or $280 was, a resistance level because it hit twice in the previous month or so and rebounded off it to the downside. Because it's pushed through $280 on good volume, that shows there is a breakout in the share price. And that's why I'm interested in buying a trading parcel in CSL, even though I do have a buy and hold um, holding in this company. Next company I want to talk about is QBE, an insurance company, not the sort of company I do tend to follow all that closely. And the only reason I have put this onto my buy to buy watch list was because I did hear some positive chatter about this company in a podcast I listened to recently. So I thought I might do a little bit of research on this company and I might pay a little bit closer attention to insurance companies because if we are seeing a shift in sentiment and maybe this expert's opinion is the first sign of shift in sentiment, maybe soon is the time to buy some insurance companies because QBE has not been the sort of company you have wanted to be holding over the past 15 years. Now, what I provided here is the monthly chart from 1991. And you would have been a very happy shareholder if you bought this company in 1991 and held it to the GFC because the share price went from $2.50 to a high of $35. But from the GFC, the share price has fallen from that high of $35 to a current share price of $10.70. There are indications just looking at this chart that the share price might be trying to level off. And if it is leveling off, maybe we'll see a beginning of a long-term uptrend, just potential right now. But there's nothing in this chart to get me excited at all in regards to QBE. A fairly large company, market cap 15.6 billion, revenue 15.3 billion, and operating cash flow 1.6 billion. It is an insurance company. I'm not that excited about insurance companies, so a little bit different than Warren Buffett. Uh, and I just don't think um, it's a sort of company that I would buy unless I do get some very strong signals in regards to a shift in sentiment in the share price. On to the daily chart, one year daily chart for QBE. The first thing I see here is QBE has been trading in this channel over the past year. That channel is between $8 and $11. So all you have to do with QBE is buy when the share price gets to between $8.50 and $8 and then sell whenever it gets between $10.50 and $11. And right now it's right in that zone where you might think about selling. And the only reason you would buy is if the share price can get above that resistance level. So this point in time, the only reason I'd be interested in QBE, if it gets above $10 or $11, or if it gets below about $8.50. So at this point in time, all I think what is happening with QBE is we're getting these swing traders who are buying when the share price gets towards $8 and then selling when the share price gets towards $11. The final company I want to talk about is Gentrack, and you can just definitely see the shifts in sentiment when you look at the five-year weekly chart I've given you here. Going back five years ago, this was a market darling of sorts. We did see the share price in a well-developed uptrend, which lasted to the middle of 2018, when the share price went to as high as about $7. Then the sentiment shifted around the middle of 2018 and we saw the share price started to drift downwards. But it wasn't until late in 2019 when the share price fell off a cliff, went from $5 to a low of about $1 during the height of the COVID-19 financial panic. But since that low of a dollar, we've seen the share price just level off and consolidate, which is very 
healthy, you really want to see share price consolidate. But this company has been facing a lot of headwinds, and I think it will be coming out of those headwinds soon and maybe experiencing some tailwinds. I think that's what the market is starting to see right now. And we've seen a potential breakout in the share price, and I'll show you that potential breakout in the next slide. So Gentrack, market cap of only $150 million, but uh, even though it has a market cap of not that high, uh, revenue of $93.4 million, operational cash flow of $20.8 million. So let's look at the shorter term chart and I'll show you why I'm a little bit excited about Gentrack. Before I start talking about the six month daily chart for Gentrack, I should just mention that Sir Gentrack will be releasing a half year report on the 27th of May. I'm recording this video about 10.30 a.m. on the 25th of May, and we have seen some interesting share price action over the past few trading days in regards to Gentrack. And what I'm thinking right now is the market is anticipating a positive half-year result from the company. And today, on the 25th of May, 30 minutes after open, we have seen Gentrack's share price increase a further 5%, and currently it's a dollar. 66. So I think this bullish move in Gentrack is just anticipating, or the market anticipating, some good news in the half yearly. So before this bullish move in the share price of Gentrack, nothing to be really excited when you look at the six-month daily chart. Share price going sideways, trading between a range of $1.20 and $1.55. So that $1.55 was a resistance. It pulled through that resistance on the 24th of May on not great volume, but good enough volume, and that's continued today. So we have seen a breakout in the share price. I would prefer a breakout in the share price to coincide with a positive report, because we don't know if the half yearly is going to be positive. And if it's not positive, we might see Gentrack share price take a massive hit. So I would wait until we see that positive financial report before taking a position, even though the share price has broken out a few days before the release of that report. There were a few other companies I wanted to feature in this video, but I don't want uh, this video to go too long. So I want to talk about Treasury Wine Estates, Midway, Simic, and Gascoin Resources. So I'll do that video tomorrow, the 26th of May, and release that in the afternoon or evening. If you have any questions about the companies I did or featured today, or any companies I'll be featuring in tomorrow's video, make sure you leave a comment or a question or answer anything you have to say ASAP. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor, so if you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's all for this video. Have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye.